Well, today we have a very special guest. His name is Jim Holland, and he has been a good life's attorney for several decades. I promised Jim that, that I would uh, have you potentially talk to our followers a little bit about, about premium pay. Okay. Jim is part of a, a firm, it's Fisher uh, & Phillips, and it's a national firm, which is really important when you get into the labor law, I'll tell you. Uh, but I'm going to have Jim talk a little bit about it, and then we'll talk about premium pay. Yeah, no, well, thanks for having me. Fisher Phillips is a national labor and employment law firm. All we do is represent employers in labor and employment issues. And, of course, labor and employment issues, as you know, is a wide uh, span of, a yeah. uh, wide spectrum of issues. You know, it's never gone down, Jim. <laughs> it has not. Which, never. Which is, is why we've got over 500 lawyers across the country in 36 different offices. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and just a, a, a kind of a in terms of how Fisher Phillips has grown. So Fisher Phillips started back in Atlanta uh, back during World War II uh, with Ike Fisher and Earl Phillips uh, started the firm back at that time. And of course, labor and employment law was a lot different back then. It but since that time, the firm has grown. We actually merged our practice here in Kansas City with Fisher Phillips back in 2005. And in 2005, when we joined the firm, so that's been 17 years now, there were about 150 lawyers and we were the 13th office. And so just in those 17 years, that's how much the firm has grown. In I mean, isn't it really a kind of indication of labor law in general, it, though, right? It, it is. I mean, you know, again, you know, historically, labor law and, or labor and employment law was a very small spectrum of the legal practice. And now it has just grown into a massive issue for employers. And it's, it's almost impossible for any employer, regardless of their size, to operate efficiently in most states without mm -hmm. some guidance from an attorney at some point. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you a couple of points why I, I have always loved our relationship. And that is labor, you know, we, as you know, we work with places across the country, but labor is national and, you know, federal labor law. But every state has its own version of what how they do business and so having a perspective at the federal level but also i don't know how many states but you're in the majority of the states in our country so having both the state and the federal perspective at one time is like really critical it, no it is i mean because even if you are being compliant with the federal law a lot of times the state law is a little bit different um, and of course, we have, I think, of the 36 offices that we've got, we've got attorneys that are licensed and all, but I think one of the states in the country. Wow. Um, so we're pretty much able to provide advice to people anywhere they might be. And, and that is a huge issue. If you've, if you've got a national employer, you know, I might be able to provide great advice for somebody on the federal issues and on issues in Missouri and Kansas, but if an employee has an issue in California, which is a horse of a different color, or New York, or Alabama, or wherever, I've got people I can turn to, which is a great benefit to the client. You know, one level of it is it's really great to have both a federal and a state perspective and to work with one company that has all of them, you know, all together. Uh, the other thing that really hit me that I've always admired over our decades of, of work is that, you know, uh, you work with a, a you know, a, a cor I, we have corporate law, law uh, partners too, but in reality, you know, labor law is so specialized, you know, and so what I would be working with a corporate lawyer and you have to get, you know, hours and hours of research. We don't have to do that. And so it's really nice to be able to to, to not actually pay for the research that, that, you know, other people do. And I'm sure you experienced that. It, it, yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, if somebody were to ask me, what is the biggest advantage that, uh, you know, that my, when we had our own little practice here in Kansas City, uh, we were a Kansas City law firm, but we had a national practice, and we mm -hmm. would do work for companies across the across the nation. But if I ha if I had a client that had an issue in Florida the, about a Florida issue, I might have to end up spending several hours researching that issue in Florida. One of the great advantages to being part of a national practice like we do is that if you, as a client, have an issue in Florida. I send an email to my Florida colleagues, and usually within five minutes, I have the answer, and you get the answer without really being billed for any time, as opposed to used to. I'd have to do yeah. several hours of research. But I, I would say that even worked on the federal level. I remember a couple of years ago, or I can't even remember how many years ago, we had an ERISA question. What you had a expert 
in Atlanta or some a place that you brought in just for that very specific thing, and it was like exactly what we needed, and they answered the question. You yeah, know, that's what. I, and, and, and that's that's one of the advantages of being part of a, a firm like ours that is that is a national labor, a national firm that focuses on labor and employment right, issues. Right. Well, I have loved all of that, and I and, and when I go back to my episode, you know, five where I was talking about premium pay, which is what we'll talk about a little bit right now. Uh, it was all about you know uh, you have to consult your attorney. And I should have said your labor attorney in all truth, but you have to consult it because it isn't just about the federal requirements of something like premium pay, but it's also their state sort of nuances with it. And so it's important to know both those so you're comfortable when you implement it. And so I, I'll kind of use that as a setup for this. Uh, you know, we do lots of work across the country and schedules and strategies and, 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 and then the truth is, uh, we all want, uh, all the people I work with, all the agencies I work with, want to pay as people as much as we possibly can. And we have a limited budget, you know, right. we, we're in, in, in social services. So you want to pay as, as much as you possibly can, but we provide care 24-7, 365 days a week. And so the only way that we can maximize how much we pay people is if, if we pay them in ways that, that they get the job done for us too as, a, as a, an employer. Premium pay is a really great, you know, I'm not going to use this one to re repeat what I did in my, you know, five, my episode five blog, which told how we use it, but what it is and how it works is something kind of I wanted to talk about today. And how is it different, Jim, than, than uh, being uh, like a differential? So, you know, that's the kind of questions that a lot of people have. They think, oh, I pay a differential. A most common question I have is I pay a differential. Uh, and I know that that has to go in the base wage when you calculate overtime. What do you mean? How could premium pay work differently? So could you give a little bit of a primer on what it is and kind of how it works at a high level? Yeah, and it's a it's a very unique issue in terms of how the pay structure can work. And, and this is one of those areas you mentioned kind of the difference between federal and state. Wage and hour issues, which is part of labor and employment law, is one of the areas where you definitely need to figure out, okay, I might be okay under the federal law, but am I okay under whatever state I'm in? And yeah. the premium pay is a classic example of that because this premium pay that we're going to talk about, it's okay under federal law, but some states might not allow it. So, right. so you have to be careful. But what the premium pay structure basically does is that, as a general rule, any money that you pay to a non-exempt hourly employee gets thrown into a bucket. And at the end of the week, to figure out what that employee's regular rate is, you have to divide by the hours they worked, and that's now their hourly rate, and then you have to pay time and a half for overtime hours they work. Right. Premium pay is a way to where you can exclude some of what you throw into the bucket. Okay. And so, for example, if you were to say there, the premium pay provision under the federal labor law, and it's section 76 of the federal labor law, but it basically says that if you pay a premium that is at least one and a half times the, employee, the amount you pay the employee for all their other hours, that you can exclude that premium from determining their regular rate if that premium is paid on a Saturday, Sunday, a holiday, or the sixth or seventh day of the work week. So by way of example, if you had uh, somebody whose hourly rate was $10 an hour, Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you say, because Saturday and Sunday are these special days, we're going to pay you at least time and a half. We're going to pay you at least $15 for every hour you work right. on a Saturday or Sunday. You're able to say, okay, well, now when i got to figure out how much I owe that person for overtime, I don't throw the hours they worked at $10 and the hours they worked at $15 into the bucket and, and in essence, artificially increase their $10 hourly rate. You get to take that $5 premium you paid on the special days out and their hourly rate stays at $10 an hour. Now, the real advantage to this premium pay structure, though, is that that premium that you pay for those special days, you get a credit towards overtime that you otherwise owe. In that pay period. In that pay period. Right. In that pay period. But it's a way of basically paying an employee, particularly in your guys' industry, mm -hmm. where you are 24-7. And you're, it's difficult to get people to work at partic on particular days or particular hours. You can end up setting the work week where 
you pay that premium on the sixth or seventh day of the work week and you're not artificially increasing that person's hourly rate and you also get a credit towards overtime to get otherwise. So the difference would be then uh, a different approach is most commonly somebody is paying a weekend um, differential or an evening different, or different types of differentials, but a weekend differential is an example. That would not be premium pay if it wasn't, if, if they advertised that as a differential, for example, or put it, uh, if it wasn't time and a half to a regular base. Talk about that for a minute. Well, certainly if it's not, I mean, the, this premium pay that we're talking about is only, it only counts towards getting it out of the regular rate and crediting it towards overtime if it's at least 150% or time and a half of the regular rate. The regular rate. So if you paid, for example, somebody on the weekend a differential of, if they're, again, their hourly rate's $10 and you're going to pay them 12 on the weekends, it's not going to qualify. It's going to, that would end up being going in the base and it would artificial, it would increase their, their, their base rate, which would then increase over time right. under that. Right. So it's got to be yeah. at least 150% or time and a half to take advantage of this exclusion. Um, and if it's something where you're just calling it a differential, even if it's time and a half, but you're only calling it a differential and you're not explaining to the employee, here's how it works, mm -hmm. you're going to create problems for yourself. Yeah. Because one of the big issues with wage and hour uh, laws is that a lot of employers think, well, my employees, they've agreed to work overtime and not get time and a half. Well, the, la the wage and hour laws are strict liability. Yeah. Uh, and so you got to make sure that the employees understand how they're being paid. Mm -hmm. First of all, because if they don't understand how they're being paid, they're more likely to end up, you know, creating, a, a, making a complaint and saying, well, hey, I didn't understand this was how my payment structure worked. And so you want to make sure that they understand it. Not only because it avoids legal issues, but it's the fair thing to do with the employees. Well, you bring that up because that's part of like what we do based upon how you've helped us, actually. And, well, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the great things, you know, about the premium pay structure, though, is that uh, when some people first hear of it, they're like, "Well, that's taking advantage of the employees." Well, first of all, it's not. I mean, it, it, it's it's complying with the law. But the more important thing is, is that with the premium pay structure. Let's say that you designate Saturday and Sunday as the premium days, mm -hmm. just to, uh, for this scenario. Well, if an employee only works on Saturday and Sunday, and they never work the other days of the week, they're getting that premium pay even though yes. they're not working overtime. Right. And so it's, a, it's something that encourages the employees to work those hours and incentivizes them mm -hmm. to do so. And, and I'll tell you, Jim, in our industry, you know, when we go out and look at things, we find that Saturday and Sunday are the highest days where there's call off. Oftentimes it's riddled with part-time labor. And so really the Saturday and Sunday is not also where the supervision is. You know, they're usually the supervision is skewed through the week. Right. And all the training and backups and supports are too. So weekends are exposed in many ways. And so this really is a, a way to strengthen the the weekend so we we use this as part of other things that we do but you talk about you know we've actually in ours we have the sixth and the seventh day and saturday and sunday are actually the same so we've changed our work week so that they kind of are the same thing and, and so maybe somebody would work a couple days through the week and a saturday well that credit on a saturday should they conserve as credit against any other overtime worked in that week. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because you glossed over it, but, but it's a credit, right? T explain what, uh, at least at the federal level. Yeah, again. Yeah. It may be different in different states, and you got to look at that. But what, how, does a, how would a credit work? Well, to, to try and make the math easy, let's say that somebody, let's say that Saturday and Sunday are your special days where you're paying the premium. And again, using an example of somebody that's normally paid $10 an hour, and then they get paid uh, $15 an hour for working on Saturday. And let's say that they work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 12 hours a day, and then they come in and work on a Saturday, right, for another 12 hours. So that person has worked 48 total hours in the week. Right. And they're getting paid for those hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They're getting paid $10 an hour. Well, that's $360. And they work on a Saturday. They're going to get paid $15 an hour for those 12 hours. That's $180. Uh, right dollars an hour. But that person's worked eight hours of overtime. They worked 48 hours that week. So you owe them eight hours of overtime. Well, what's that person's regular rate? 
Well, because of the premium pay provision, their regular rate stays at 10. It doesn't go up to 15 or something in between there. It stays mm -hmm. at 10. So you owe that person eight hours of the half-time premium, uh, which is $5 an hour, because that's half of the regular rate. So you owe that person $40 in overtime. Yep. But because you already paid $15 an hour or a $5 premium on for the 12 hours on Saturday, you paid $60 in premium to that person already. Yeah. And so the $60 you paid is the premium. You get to credit that towards the overtime you owe, $40. And in that situation, you would not know it, owe that person any the additional additional overtime. additional overtime. And I, and I think if you go back to our episode five and you rewatch it now with this kind of information, you're going to see that what we do is we may have somebody work three days a week. And one of those days may be a Saturday and they work a, a Thursday and Friday. So they're really working 20, 12 a day, 24 hours. If they pick up an extra day through the week, well, we've already have a credit of overtime for that, and that would be covered under that additional credit. And if they work the other, if they work a Saturday, then they pick up a Sunday where we're already paying time and a half for that. So the point we always make is, you know, it's really a way to really budget your labor costs in a way that's very predictable so that you know what you're going to spend Plus, you reinforce the days and the working uh, pattern that you really want to work. Absolutely. So it's 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 a way where you're because of the premium that you're paying, you're you're in essence being able. You're kind of budgeting yeah. the overtime into your you're, you are. Costs. But you're doing it in a way that's going to make it so that you're going to have very stable days on the days that you don't have a lot of supervision, and that you have more exposure, and that really helps a lot of people. Because you know, when I go look across the country, the first thing I have them do is I have them show me their, their call-off data, or I even have them show me their, their open positions, and you'll see they're disproportionately on the weekend right. or kind of fractured kind of schedules that are on the part-time, mostly on the weekend or in, in the evening. And so, you know, by redesigning all that, but with a compensation system that reinforces how it's done, it makes a huge difference. Now, I don't want to go into it because we don't actually use it, but I've been intrigued by it. There's a, there's a different kind of premium pay for for, for working over eight? Well, there's another provision of the premium pay structures. Again, the normal rule is whatever you pay somebody gets thrown into the bucket and to figure out the regular rate, unless there's a specific exclusion for it. There's another exclusion beyond the Saturday, Sunday, or special day provision. There's another exclusion where if you're paying a premium for hours worked over eight in a day, or hours over the employee's normal schedule, whatever their normal schedule for the day might be, that premium can also be excluded from the regular rate, and it also can be a credit towards overtime otherwise mm -hmm. owed. Now, the interesting thing about the what we'll call I'll call the daily premium is it doesn't have to be a time and a half right. of the otherwise right. regular rate. So if you were to pay somebody ten dollars an hour, and then when they work over eight hours in a day, you pay them $11. Once they go over eight, that extra dollar you pay them doesn't change their regular rate. Their regular rate would stay at 10, but that extra dollar you paid them now gets to be credited towards overtime that you might owe that person for working uh, overtime in the week. Now, the, one of the issues with the daily premium is that if you're going to do it, you have to pay that daily premium for the hours over eight or whatever their regular schedule is on every day of the week. Yeah. So whether they work a Monday or a Saturday or whatever it is, once they hit whatever the threshold hours are and start earning the mm -hmm. premium, you got to pay them. Well, I, I, you know, the moral of all these stories is, is a couple of things. One is that is, you know, consult your attorney. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you have to have a great one. And, and you have to be connected not only at the federal level, but at the state level. The second thing is, Keep it simple for the most part. I mean, that's my, always my advice is keep it simple and line it up. That's why we have, we do the Saturday, Sunday premium pay, but we always line up our work week to end with, you know, uh, and we actually make this the sixth and seventh day and Saturday, Sunday, the same on our work week. So it really kind of lines up and keeps it simple for the employee. Uh, and I talk a little bit about that in, my, in the other episode. But the other thing is, is you've got to explain it well you know, to the employee. And, and that's something that we've already, because you can have a great system, but if they don't 
understand it or you can't demonstrate that they, they did understand it like a presentation and, a, and what we have is a memorandum of understanding where they go through a couple of exercises so that they do it. But if they don't understand it well, uh, it, it can cause problems there too. So Well, yeah, and, and not only understand it, but understand the math behind it, yeah. but understand that it's a system that's put into place to really be of, of an advantage both to the employer and the employee. Yep. And, and, and I'll tell you kind of my ending shot on this is that that you there's so many gr great exemptions and systems out there. The goal is looking at what kind, how you want to deliver care and how you want to deliver your schedules and figuring out an approach that, that reinforces everybody and kind of has everybody kind of rowing in the same direction. And that's why, you know, in our industry, we have people who work longer shifts and we have people who work weekends and things like that. And, and they, they, they need to be reinforced, but differentials aren't necessarily the best way to, to do that. You know, and, and this is different. People haven't seen it or used it as much, but it really does work beautifully if it's done the right ways. And, and, and I would have to say we couldn't have done it without you. Uh, and you've helped uh, a lot of people with this. Um, so, uh, you know, my parting shot here is uh, if you like podcasts, you can get this one anywhere you get podcasts, right? Uh, and uh, we are grateful to have um, Jim uh, talk about something that everybody asks questions about for a, a long time. I would tell you his information uh, is going to be uh, posted on, on, the, on the cast so that if anybody wants to contact uh, his firm directly or maybe working in another state and needs a referral, um, I'm sure that they'd be happy to get you connected, but uh, consult your attorney.